Greetings, everyone. This is Fred Coulter. Welcome to Church at Home. Church at Home is sponsored by the Christian Biblical Church of God, and we are dedicated to restoring original Christianity for today. If there is ever a nation that is losing its way, it's the United States of America and many other nations of the world, because the problems in the world now are international and they affect everyone. When we look at the prophecies in the Bible, one of the most astounding prophecies that we have in Matthew 24 and verse 12, because lawlessness shall be multiplied. Now, multiplied means it just sin upon sin upon sin, against law, against law, against law. And we see that in the government. We see it in the schools. We see it in the churches. We see it in the lives of individuals. They're just going to go their own way. And look at all of the troubles that we have. And one of the most difficult ones we have is drugs. And drugs cause the most disillusionment possible. Now, why does that happen? Well, it happens because, as we find in the book of Jeremiah, human nature, human nature wants to go against the laws of God. And human nature is a mixture of good and evil, but evil is always there pulling down. And evil, in most cases, tends to be victorious. And what happens then when people are caught in the trap of drugs? All kinds of drugs. Here, let's look and see what illicit drugs has done here in America. The percentage of persons Age 12 years and older, with any illicit drug use in this past month, now this was in 2016, 10.6%. Now it's probably way, way higher. But if you figure 10%, that's 33 million. And if it's up about 15%, then it's 45 million people. Now, that's quite a thing. And the number of drug overdoses, 70,237 in 2017. It's probably down a little bit because of some of the activities to go against it. Drug overdose deaths per 100,000 in America is 19.7. Drug overdose deaths involving opioids per 100,000 is 13.1. Drug overdose deaths involving synthetic opioids other than methadone per 100,000 is 6. Drug overdose involving heroin per 100,000 is nearly five. Drug overdose involving natural and synthetic opioids per 100,000 is 
Now look what they're doing by legalizing marijuana, commonly known as pot. And in the messages that I did for years and years before the way it is right now, we knew that the pressure against the politicians would be great because of the increased tax money they would get. However, that only lasts for a short time because of the problems from marijuana. Marijuana causes bipolarism. It causes all kinds of mental diseases and is responsible for an awful lot of crime. You know, with more pot being grown all over the state, police wonder if the violence and the problems will only get worse. Marijuana is worth more than most, and the one agricultural product police deal with all the time. You know, there's a lot of crooks out there who will just go where it is. They want dope and money, they'll go to where there's dope and money um, and take it sometimes by force. Force and sometimes violence. They are the walking dead. A growing drug craze is turning people like these into zombies. It's synthetic marijuana. On the street, it's called Spice, or K2, and it's showing up in neighborhoods across the nation. The drug is so strong, people go into a zonked out state. Sometimes it can even turn peaceful people into crazies. <laughs> New York City Police Commissioner Bill Bratton. These individuals, uh, many of them, under the influence of this drug, totally crazy. 66-year-old Peter Varduniotis got the shock of his life when he was watching a local WCBS news broadcast and recognized his own son as one of the walking dead. He looked like he was a zombie. This was his son Peter Jr. just two years ago at a family wedding. This is my son Peter, the one I raised, the one I know, not the one I saw on TV. Hopefully their son will get the help he so urgently needs, along with these other poor souls of the real life walking dead. Then we have cocaine. Cocaine comes into this country almost like the rain falls from heaven. When the Coast Guard and the drug interdiction forces work against it, they get hundreds of thousands of pounds worth billions of dollars coming into this country. The U.S. Coast Guard is fighting a record tide of cocaine off the Pacific coast. Carter Evans went on a mission and discovered what a billion dollars in drugs looks like. When surveillance aircraft spotted this makeshift submarine off Central America, a boarding team from the Coast Guard cutter Bertoff found more than $200 million of cocaine. Scott Perigo was part of the team. I mean, getting the, uh, the semi-submersible was pretty exciting. Seeing the sheer amount of drugs they packed into it, almost 18,000 pounds. Uh, 18,000 pounds? Almost. This year, the Coast Guard, working with the military and U.S. Customs, has seized more cocaine in the Pacific than the last three years combined. On board the Bertoff, we found 50,000 pounds of cocaine, worth almost $800 million. To give you an idea of how much cocaine we're talking about here, each one of these bricks is a kilo worth about $25,000. That means this is a quarter million dollars. This entire pallet here, about $12 million worth of cocaine. Nearly 700 smugglers have been arrested so far this year. As for the cocaine, some will be kept for evidence. The rest will be incinerated. Carter Evans, CBS News, aboard the Coast Guard Cutter Bertoff. What is it about people? that they want to take the drugs, that they want to have something greater than themselves to make them feel good. But it always boomerangs. It never works. Then you have the deadly fentanyl. Fentanyl, they're now combining with heroin and methamphetamine. And that is killing a lot of people. And it takes just a little bit. A new study from the CDC found fentanyl-related deaths between 2011 and 2016 increased more than 1,000 percent. More than 36,000 Americans died with it in their system. And yet, 
We've done nothing to stop it coming in from China and the manufacture in China. Okay? And fentanyl is 50 to 100 times more potent than morphine. And its ability to readily enter the brain tissue, it can be lethal to breathe air with atomized fentanyl in it or to touch a contaminated surface. And people are dying from it. Now, why is that? Why would someone be involved in something that would destroy their lives? And why would they think that they can get away with it? Well, let's see what happens when people are immersed in sin. Let's come to Jeremiah 17, verse 1. The sin of Judah. Now, that could be the sin of America. That could be the sin of who's ever involved in great forms of lawlessness. Is engraved with a pen of iron and the point of a diamond and is carved upon the tablet of their heart and upon the horns of their altar. Isn't that something? Become so ingrained that they can't stop. Now, if you watch Nat Geo, you watch them on their narcotic and drug undercover work that they do with dealers. And these dealers know that their lives are going to be short. And they know that they've got to sell it. And they know that they have to arm themselves. And they know that to get caught means virtually death. And yet, they themselves are addicted to it and sell to people who are addicted. Work for the Chinese triads. If there's no pseudo, you can't make any um, ice. And if there's no ice, there's no, got no money, and the tryouts are unhappy. They're not getting their share. If you want to survive, you may as well bring a gun to a knife fight. That's why I always carry one of these. Kay is a meth cook. As a drug user, he's barred from joining the triads, but he can cook for them. Uh, I learned how to cook from my friends, actually. It looked simple, and basically I could get my hands on the substance, and it was the easy way to make money. Why would people become so deluded into thinking that they can take all these various forms of drugs and somehow escape the consequences? Here's why. Verse 9, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked, but people like to think that they are good and that they can get away with it and that it won't happen to them. But they're only deluding themselves. They will not listen to those who say, don't do it. They won't listen to those who will say, you're going to destroy your life. It's a matter of time until someone's killed. These people can help you. Will you please get help now and treatment? <clears throat> no. Please. No. Please, Matthew, will you take this help today? Uh, no, I, I don't. I'm not interested in the help you guys are offering. Okay. Well, your life is going to change today either way. So let's tell them how things are different if you don't go. I'll go to the courthouse this week and file for a restraining order that you have to be 600 yards away from the baby. Please get help for yourself. No. Matthew, if you say no to treatment, you will not return to the condo. I will change the locks. Please accept this help today. No. Matthew, you're not going to have a place to live. I'm sorry, but no. OK, Mom. No more money, Matthew. So is the answer no? Oh, no, that's... Please, please, Matthew. I just don't want to do it. Because of this lust and sin and greed, I want you to learn something else as well. 
and the main purveyor behind all of these drugs is the number one enemy of God, Satan the devil. And he comes and says that this will bring a benefit to you, or you can make lots of money on it if you involve yourself in selling. And that's quite a thing. But what happens? Satan will tell you anything because he's the father of lies. And he is the father of one who wants to destroy as many people as possible through the lawlessness that he has instigated against God through many layers of people and societies and countries and nations. Now, I want you to listen to this poem by an unknown author entitled, the delusion of drugs. I destroy homes, tear families apart, take your children, and that is just the start. I am more costly than diamonds, more costly than gold. The sorrow that I bring is a sight to behold. If you need me, Remember, I am easily found. I live all around you, in school and in your town. I live with the rich, I live with the poor. I live down the street, and maybe next door. My power is awesome, try me, you'll see. But if you do, you may never break free. Try me just once, and I might let you go. But try me twice, and I will own your soul. When I possess you, you will steal, and you will lie. You do what you have to, just to get high. The crimes you will commit for my narcotic charms will be worth the pleasure you'll feel in your arms. You will lie to your mother, you will steal from your dad. When you see their tears, you should feel sad. But you will forget your morals and how you were raised. I will be your conscience. I will teach you my way. I take kids from parents and parents from kids. People turn from God and separate from friends. I will take everything from you, your looks and your pride. I will always be with you right by your side. You will give up everything, your family, your home, your friends, your money, and all that you own, and then you will be alone. I will take, and I will take, until you have nothing more to give. When I'm finished with you, you'll be lucky to live. But if you try me, be warned, this is no game. If given the chance, I will drive you insane. I will ravage your body. I will control your mind. I will own you completely. Your soul shall be mine. The nightmares I will give you while lying in bed. The voices you will hear from inside your head. The sweats, the shakes, the visions you will see. I want you to know these are all gifts from me. Author Unknown Let's come here to the book of Proverbs. 
And let's look at something very profound. Now, the book of Proverbs, I encourage anyone who has been on drugs or trying to get off drugs that you begin studying the book of Proverbs because that will help you in overcoming. But you have to admit your sins, and you have to admit that you gave in to it. Everyone likes to blame someone else. Well, I was at this party and someone gave it to me. Why did you go to the party? Why did you choose that? Or, well, I was with friends and they said, try it, you like it. And got hooked on methamphetamines or heroin. Why? Because you're lawless. And the first thing you need to do is admit to yourself that you are a sinner and you believed the wrong things. Now, Proverbs 17 and verse 4. A wicked doer gives heed to false lips. Now, if you take any form of drugs, you are a wicked doer. Now, you may say, well, I'm really not that way. Really? Proverbs 12 and verse 15. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes. Now, isn't that what people are when they take the drugs? They don't want to admit I'm foolish. They don't want to admit they've listened to lying lips. No, somehow they feel and think their way around it, but it destroys everything. And if they don't quit, destroy their lives. Proverbs 13 and verse 6, Righteousness guards the one who is upright in the way. In other words, the one who makes right choices and does what is right and good, that's going to keep him from getting in trouble. But notice the other half of this verse. But wickedness overthrows the sinner. And isn't that what drugs do? It overthrows your mind, your ability, your strength, your work, and as the delusion of drug shows, it destroys everything in its path. Proverbs 15, verse 10. There is grievous correction for him who forsakes the way. How does that correction come? Comes because you ruin your health, you ruin your mind, you ruin your job, and almost everything that you do is irreparable. And even if you try to do good, you've been doing evil for so long that you don't know how to do good, and you don't know how to say no. So the correction comes automatically with the drug use. Continuing in verse 10, he who hates reproof shall die. And hasn't that happened to a lot of people who were told, you better get off the drugs because you see what happens when you're on those drugs, you automatically bring the penalty of the curse upon your own self, your own body, your own mind, your own family, or whatever it is that you have. And some people are so addicted that they will sell their soul. They will do anything for the next fix. And that's exactly where Satan wants you. Proverbs 15 and verse 32. He who refuses instruction despises his own soul, his own body, his own life just for the drugs, just for the heroin. I've talked to heroin addicts who have overcome it. But you know what one man admitted to me? He said, this is hard. He says, because every day, though I've overcome it, I crave it. My body craves it. So you see, if you refuse instruction. And if you turn your, your back on correction, then 
it's going to come and it's going to be devastating and you won't know what to do and there is no one to help and you will be all, all, all alone. And just like that reading of that poem, Delusion of Drugs, once you give yourself to it, Satan owns your soul. Now we'll see you can come out of it. Verse 17, bread of deceit is sweet to a man. Yes, got to have that high. Oh, I need that high. But afterwards, his mouth shall be filled with gravel. Now that means everything is going to be completely wrong. And everything that you do is going to be like your mouth is full of gravel because you have been overtaken by the drugs. Now, what are you going to do about it? Now, God can help you with it. But you have some things that you need to do. First of all, you have to acknowledge what you have done. And then you have to repent, and we'll talk about repentance in the next segment. And you have to ask God in prayer to be sure and resist taking any more drugs. And that decision you have to do. Now, you can get help from some drug rehabs, and one of the best is the Salvation Army. And the reason is they make you Discipline yourself so that you won't fall back into that drug addiction. Because if you do, there's virtually no way out. Michael English says he struggled with addiction for nearly 20 years. Opiates, uh, marijuana, and alcohol. He says things didn't start to turn around until he came to the Salvation Army Adult Rehabilitation Center on Military Road in Buffalo. If it wasn't for the Salvation Army, my life would be shot. We have people who uh, just suffer from alcoholism, uh, guys who come in that it's a mix uh, of drug use and alcohol. Um, so the opioid epidemic is something that uh, is really at the forefront of what we're trying to combat here. Participants live on site for 6 to 12 months. They meet with counselors, take classes, help with work in the building, and pray. And remember the number of deaths that take place because of all of the drugs that are going on in America today. And think of all the crime and thievery and every, every other thing associated with it. So what are you going to do with your life? You need our book, Lord, What Should I Do? And you have to admit, and you have to come before God and say, I, I am a sinner. I have been deceived. I have deceived myself. Now, with that, there will be some hope. But it's going to take a lot of work on your part, and whoever is going to help you get out of it, it's going to take a lot of work on their part, and you must quit deceiving yourself and quit thinking that what you're doing is right. That's the only way that you can get out of it. And that is the first step. So I hope this helps you. Help your children. Let them hear the delusion of drugs and watch this video segment so that they will be able to arm themselves so when they go to school, they can resist and say no and have the strength of character and power to stand and not give in. Thank you for inviting me into your home. So until next time, this is Fred Coulter saying, so long, everyone.